Hi, my name is Michael Hogue, and I am the CTO of Rotary Entertainment, and also the lead game developer for an upcoming title that we're calling Ancient Board Games, or ABG for short. And ABG is a UE5 project. It's a tabletop simulator uh, where you'll be able to play different board games from antiquity. So what's sort of unique about what we're trying to do is not only bring the board game to UE5, but to also transport you and your friends, because it is a multiplayer experience, uh, back to like the great city of Ur in Mesopotamia, or even here at the Giza Plateau during Fourth Dynasty times, and be able to play uh, different variations of various games that are, you know, both simple to learn and qu quite a bit of fun to play, actually. Um, a lot of them play out like checkers or backgammon or even that game Sorry, if you remember from a <laughs> big kid. Uh, that was based on an old Aztec game. Um, they, they seem familiar, but they require a little bit of skill and quite a bit of uh, just random luck, RNG, uh, to play. And, um, and we're bringing that to, a, to an experience uh, here in Unreal Engine 5. Um, I should mention that a lot of the rules of these games have been lost to antiquity, and so we're setting up each of the games with customizable rule sets based on the different interpretations of like archaeologists and academics that study these things. But what it'll allow you to do is to set up uh, you know tournaments uh, for your clan or you know your your gaming clubs um, where we'll have multiple players being able to play each other and get up and sit down and uh, continue tournament play. So I have a little tech demo of uh, an Egyptian map here and we really want to kind of create sort of a historically accurate version as best we can of, of some of these locations. So before I talk about the task for today, uh, let me show you a little behind the scenes of how we set up a map like this. So having done a little bit of research, um, I've created sort of a decal here that uh, shows me where the fourth dynasty waterways had been carved um, into the, the valley. So the Nile River here would run sort of north to south uh, off on the east side of the map. But it shows me the locations of the Khufu, Khafre, and Menkare pyramids and where the Sphinx sat and where the floodplain was. I have elevation lines to help me set up my terrain. I've got scale marker here to make sure everything's real world scale. Um, I've got a compass here. So I've aligned uh, sort of east down my x-axis. Uh, of my transform. And it also shows me that we're sitting at uh, roughly 30 degrees north latitude uh, at this location. So uh, having something like this is really good for a number of useful purposes and each of the maps that we're setting up is based on uh, these dig site plans uh, that we've been sort of uh, doing research on to help set up things like Sphinx Temple and the Sphinx and Kent Kawes and and so forth. So um, the task for today, we have this is sort of a tech demo. It's not fully decoed. It's definitely not production ready, um, but there are a number of places that you can sit uh, for our internal testing and, and play. Um, and the map currently has a nice sunrise here off to the east that the, the Sphinx is sort of looking towards the sun. Um, north would be in that direction. Um, but today, uh, what I'm going to attempt to um, do is set up a night map. Uh, because we are doing uh, sunrise, daytime, sunset, and night uh, versions of these maps. And I want to get uh, a nice star map in here that is perfectly aligned not only to the location of this uh, location on Earth, but also is oriented correctly uh, for the time period. So we're talking about, you know, 6,000 years ago, um, the precession of the Earth um, has changed over time. The location of constellations are a little bit different. And that is going to present me with a pretty nasty challenge to find uh, an HDRI sky map that is set up perfect for what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, one of the problems is that modern day Giza, you know, these waterways were not here anymore and the modern city sits right here, but it's almost all the way up to the uh, Eastern Cemetery by the, this pyramid. And so if I was even to get super lucky and find somebody that did a 360 uh, photo of the sky at the pyramids, um, it may have some modern buildings on the horizon. It may have light pollution. There's a number of issues with uh, just taking a photo and slapping it up in here. Um, uh, it obviously, I didn't have cameras 6,000 years ago. Um, so that's 
that means we're going to have to recreate a sky from scratch and uh, figure out how to get everything sort of lined up perfect. Uh, because in our research, uh, we've discovered that many of these temples are celestially aligned. So, for example, the uh, Sphinx itself, uh, looking eastward, at a certain time of year, uh, the Sphinx would be looking at the constellation of Leo, which is the lion. And so I expect somewhere here in the sky to see at night uh, the constellation of Leo, which is probably going to look like a, a question mark, uh, maybe a backwards question mark, and then it goes down to a triangle representing its back haunches. So I want that constellation to sort of appear here. And knowing that this is north, we would want to find um, what what was the celestial north star back 4000 BC and get that about 30 degrees up off the horizon um, in this direction given the latitude that we're at and I've also read that the pyramids uh, the design shape scale location uh, perfectly aligns with the stars in Orion's belt and uh, not only that but Orion sits pretty close to the Milky Way and that uh, when you're looking up at uh, Orion sitting here with his belt aligned to the pyramids, the Milky Way would actually uh, transverse the sky north to south in the same direction and location as the Nile River. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly true, but uh, I saw it in a video, so we're going to try and accomplish those things. That's the task for today. Uh, we're going to make uh, a night map, a custom HDRI sky uh, cube map, and trying to get everything all aligned. So with that said, uh, let's get started. Okay, so to get started, uh, we're going to need to do two things. Uh, first, we're going to need to source ourselves a texture, a star map of the skies, and then we're going to need to figure out where Celestial North was back in time. So did a little Google searching and it led myself to this NASA Scientific Visualization Studio website where they have some deep star maps that look uh, pretty interesting. Uh, what caught my eye here, and uh, these are visualizations by Ernie Wright, by the way, um, 100 million stars from a couple different star catalogs all stitched together. The projections are either in celestial or galactic coordinates, but uh, right here, they're designed for spherical mapping, which is perfect because that means I can slap this onto a standard sphere in Unreal Engine 5 and be able to manipulate the sky from there um, without having to worry about UV unwrapping and all of that that goes with it. So uh, I did see down here this particular star map in galactic coordinates. So that means uh, sort of a line to our galaxy. So the Milky Way here is shown across the center. Center of the galaxy is kind of right here, dead center. And uh, this also looks like it's been done in some sort of polar projection, uh, which is perfect for putting onto a sphere. So what I'm noticing is I've got two poles here. And just a quick look, it seems like, well, it's stretched, but uh, this looks like the Big Dipper to me. Uh, so much like when you take a globe and flatten it out and Greenland and Siberia are all stretched out, the same kind of thing is going to be happening on this texture. But uh, basically, this is pointing us towards Polaris, which is our North Star in current time. So it looks like I'm going to recognize this part of the sky a lot better than uh, Southern Hemisphere stars, which I'm less familiar with over here in this. Um, but that's good enough to get me started on uh, where in the sky I should be looking for some key landmarks. Okay, second thing we need to do is figure out uh, where the North Star, which star was the North Star uh, back in our time period. So I found this map here showing the precession of the North Star. And um, the reason that it moves around is because, you know, the Earth is tilted slightly in the solar system, the solar system is slightly tilted in the uh, Milky Way galaxy. And so over the course of thousands of years, uh, up in terms of the galaxy map uh, changes quite a bit. So today we all know that uh, Polaris is the North Star here 2080. Uh, so that makes sense. But over time, uh, up <laughs> direction will wander um, basically around the constellation of uh, Draco here. Let's see, I recognize the Big Dipper. And we can use the front stars on the Big Dipper to find Polaris. And if we go 4000 AD, 2000 AD, 0 AD, 2000 BC, 4000 BC, uh, it appears as though Thuban is the star that would be sort of celestial north in the time period 
in which I'm hoping to orient the sky to. So we need to figure out a way to find this particular star on this star map. So to do that, uh, let's see. I know that the handle of the Big Dipper, there's an optical double here. It's called Mizar, and that's two stars. So that's pretty close. So if I'm able to find the North Star, come down the uh, handle here and find this Kochab. Looks like it's a red dwarf of some sort. It's uh, fairly bright, given by the size of the dot. Uh, if I can go between here and the middle of the handle of Mizar, I should find Thuban there. It also appears I can verify off the back of the Big Dipper and uh, the cup part uh, also points in that direction. So we're looking for a star in this location. It also looks like there's a little red dwarf right here by my mouse cursor. Um, so we want to make sure we grab the white one, not the red one, to get a sort of perfect alignment. Okay, so I've taken um, here, I've grabbed the 8K TIFF version, the highest quality uh, that I can, and I've brought it into uh, the five already so here we are 8k by 4k a little big for you know a game uh, but basically the plan here is to wrap this around a sphere get it into a empty map uh, as a sky box basically and then i can capture a, uh, a texture cube um, projection let's create a material and put this uh, texture in it and so we can apply it to a sphere so We'll jump over here. Let's create a material. We'll call it just star map. Okay. A um, couple things I want to do right off the bat. First, I want to make sure that this is a two-sided material so that when I go inside, um, I also see stars on the inside of the sphere. Uh, having them on the outside is not going to do me any good. Uh, I want to run this into the admissive channel and Let's see, because it's on the inside of the sphere, it's probably smart to flip the U direction so that it appears correctly when I'm inside here. So let's take a look. Yep. Let's crank this up a little bit. Oh, wrong way. I'm using exposure controls. I could throw a thing in here to change the brightness of the stars, but I think once I get it in a map, it might be better just to use a post process. So, yep, yeah, here's the big dipper. Oops, I lost it. So, right here, Polaris, and there's our celestial north. So, it appears as though the backwards map uh, texture on the inside of the sphere is working properly. Yeah, here's, uh, here's uh, Orion. See the belt? there Taurus so this is going to work fine uh, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to throw this onto a sphere in an empty map and set up uh, a system to get the stars aligned first and then capture a texture cube that can be used as an HDR sky map. okay with the material sorted uh, the next step is let's create an empty level uh, that's just for the purposes of baking out our HDR sky map so to do that, uh, I'm going to go new level, empty level. I'm here in empty space. And let's add in a sphere shape to the scene. Let's uh, center it on the world. And then let's blow this thing up a little bit. Let's do something like 20. And also go find our material to throw on the background. Okay, so here we are. We're inside of this. We go unlit mode for now. Yeah. So you'll notice that the star is getting brighter and brighter, and that's because we don't have any lighting. So I'm going to throw a post process volume in here, center this guy up. Let's make sure it's set to uh, infinite bounds extent here, and then I should be able to change the metering to manual and find a value that suits the number of stars that I want to actually show. So somewhere here like 11 and a half. I think that looks nice. There we go. Okay. Uh, the size of the sky doesn't matter because we're going to be capturing a, a cube um, anyway. 
and there's no real Z depth information. So I think I do want this just to be a little bit bigger, give a little bit more room. Fly around and perfect. Okay, so task number one. Um, we need to add a scene capture cube that will actually capture the HDRI. So I'm going to search for scene capture cube and let's get you poked in there as well. And let's see. Let's face uh, make sure the snaps are on. Let's face down the north direction of my map. Remember, uh, X was east minus Y was north. So I'm going to turn this direction here. Um, in the details tab here, we're going to need to create a texture target. So let's do a cube render target. And I'm going to stick it into the same folder where I have this little guy. So let's just call him uh, star render target. Okay, let's go see what properties here we can play with. So here it's already capturing, um, but I want to change the size X here to a 2K resolution and save that. Come back here. Okay, uh, next task. Um, let's throw in something I can use to align the stars. I'm gonna use a cone see here and uh, let's see if I can find out an emissive material there we go and so let's do like something like that but really long that doesn't quite poke through let's go 40 here basically want to use this as an axis I'm going to set in the center A little bigger. There we go. So this is going to be the axis of the star system, and I want this to point in the direction of that Thuban star. So to do that, now we have to come inside and find it. So there's Orion, which means it was over on the other side, looking at the North Stars. We're going to try and find the Big Dipper, which is up here. Okay, so we're going to use the back handles here. This is going to point us in the direction of Polaris. Here's this. Here's the red dwarf. Boom. That's our Thuban star right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and get it in that general direction. Okay, <clears throat> then I'm going to turn off my snap, do a little more fine control, really get in here and get it pointed down a little bit and over just a touch. Great. Okay, so now maybe just a touch more up. OCD is flaring. Okay, good enough. So now I've got an axis um, that is aligned to the Earth, which is perfect. So if I come over here and I take my sphere onto my cone, and let's give this a name. So celestial north. Now that's going to ride on this. So if I um, manipulate this axis, then I can um, have the stars kind of go with it, right? So First thing we're going to do is we're going to sort of uh, get it in the northern direction and let's check out our little details tab here. So it looks like that wants to be uh, let's zero it out first and see what happens. So if the, we were at the North Pole laying on our backs looking up, the one would be directly up there. But what I wanted to do is point in the north direction but angle it by the latitude of Giza. So we're going to go this way first, 90. That puts it on the horizon. I'm going to back it up 
30 degrees. There we go. So now we've got our North Star. So in modern days, uh, it would be Polaris, which is way over here. But in ancient times, uh, that would be uh, true north. And now what we want to do is figure out where in the heck did uh, Orion and Leo go? So this might be a little more challenging because we've uh, already oriented the sky this way. But um, what I want to do is let's take a uh, duplicate of this and we'll call it uh, kind of Leo and then another duplicate here and we'll call this Orion. Let's see if we can find Leo. So as I mentioned, uh, we had the Big Dipper and we used the back of the Big Dipper to find the constellation Leo, which should be right here. Yep. Okay, so you see the hook of the head, just like the head of the Sphinx, and the bottom of the lion goes this way, and then this triangle here is the back haunches of Leo. So I'm just going to take and go into kind of local coordinates here. Uh, this little guy, point them sort of just generally towards the body of the lion. And then what I'm going to do now that I found that is I'm roughly half and sort of push it that direction. So that gives me an alignment there. And then we need to find Orion as well. So taking a look around, there he is down here at the bottom. We've got the uh, three stars of the belt, the sword. Uh, over here is uh, Taurus, as we mentioned. So I'm going to do the same exact thing with my other cone, my Orion cone. First, uh, we're going to go down. Go over, pointing right at the belt. Well, not right at the belt, but let's see, maybe right there. Close enough. Cool. And I'm going to do the same thing, just so I don't get confused with my celestial axis. I'm going to basically cut this in half and then slide it down in that direction. Okay, so why am I doing that? Um, because I'm going to capture the cube map and it's going to go this way. North Star is up. It's at that right latitude. But I want to swing uh, Leo over to the east and I want that to appear above the skies. So now I just take this main central axis and make sure we are in the right coordinate frame. Do I have the right thing? I don't. At the sphere instead. There we go. And so now what I can do is I can rotate the skies. Hang on. Let's make sure that these are also attached. There we go. Now I get a sense of where everything is. So I'm going to pick a time of year where Leo is going to appear in my eastern sky. It should be right about up there, there's Orion above. Be something like that. Nice. So it seems like a lot of unnecessary <laughs> sort of map and astronomy, but uh, this is sort of the look I want to go to in relation to the map that I'm on that's oriented east, north, uh, this way. So I have the prime axis running through the stars. They're rotating around their correct position in the sky. And now I can see the constellation Leo in the east with uh, Sirius, or not Sirius, but the Orion sort of above us. That's kind of the whole point. And so now that I've got that in place, it's time to capture our texture cube. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, let me hide a couple things in here. Uh, let's just show the sphere for now. And then this should be all set up. So if I bounce out to the content browser, it should be doing a capture of the sky. It's kind of perfect how I want it. And I can right click on this and create a static texture that will become my new HDRI. So I'm going to call this HDRI uh, piece 
the night, for example. And instead of you know constantly rendering out to this texture, now I can use this as a static sky in my skybox. So let's try that out next. Okay, moment of truth. Uh, we've got a copy of uh, Egypt uh, Night, and it's got just a random HDRI on it. And um, let's see if it works. So here we have the Giza Night texture. I grab the HDR backdrop and let's plunk it in here and see if it worked. So first let's go to the Sphinx. Check out his view, and yep, clear enough, here is the backwards question mark, bottom, and the body of Leo, the lion, uh, looking in the eastern direction. And if we look north, uh, again, here's the Big Dipper. That would be current day Polaris, North Star, but if we remember correctly, coming down through here, true north should be basically that white star right there, which it is. Uh, perfectly aligned to the north and then we've got the pyramid so if we look up we should see yeah the three stars of Orion belt and the Milky Way does actually match up to where the Nile goes that's pretty pretty amazing so mission accomplished and uh, like I said uh, uh, for most people playing the map they won't even probably look up but for that one stargazer guy that's gonna play and appreciates this uh, you're welcome um, but uh, this technique can be used, you know, for any location on Earth. Uh, once you get that sort of celestial alignment and point it to uh, Polaris and set it north and then angle it based on the latitude, you can actually create your own perfect star maps um, off that same texture uh, for any part of the world. Uh, just so happens that this is how things would look uh, in Egyptian times. Well, that wraps it up uh, for the task. I'm going to push this to Perforce and... Uh, I'll see you next time.